Rubber obtained from the cotton plant is one of the toughest natural fibres known to man. Historical records show us that the Egyptians were cultivating and using cotton more than 5,000 years ago. It was also used in ancient times in India and South America. Modern man uses cotton for the softest of fabrics, in the toughest of motor tyres, in shoes, in tents, in insulating material, for clothing of all kinds and for countless other purposes. Where does all this cotton come from? The cotton plant grows best in a hot, moderately damp and frostless climate. The climates that best satisfy these requirements are warm, temperate oceanic, tropical and the drier parts of the monsoon climates. All the world's cotton producing countries lie in roughly the same latitudes, therefore. This area of the Earth's surface is sometimes called the cotton belt. But as you can see, the cotton growing areas within the belt are comparatively few in number. In order that the ever increasing world demand for cotton can be met, new areas in this belt have had to be found. One of these is Uganda, one of the three territories of British East Africa, where cotton has now become one of the most important crops. Not so many years ago, people here were using the most primitive forms of clothing, animal skins and bark which was stripped from trees, soaked in water, beaten with mallets and turned into a kind of cloth suitable for their needs. Now they are cotton growers who help to clothe the world. The African farmer usually sows his cotton by hand. As a rule, five seeds are planted together. At least one will germinate and grow. As the young shoots appear, they're thinned out. From each group of five seeds, only the healthiest plant is left to develop. About five months after sowing, delicate flowers appear on the cotton plant and bloom for about three days before the ball starts to form. This is about the size of a plum and between seven and nine weeks after its first appearance, it splits open and the cotton inside bursts into a fluffy white mass. Cotton picking takes place some six to nine months after planting and among farming communities it's a task at which whole families work together. Between 50 and 100 bowls must be gathered to yield a single pound of seed cotton. Unlike many other cotton producing countries, Uganda has very few large plantations. It's the African farmer himself who benefits from the cotton. After the crop has been picked, it's sorted to separate the bowls, stalks, leaves and so on. And in this task as well, the whole family lends a hand. Once sorted in this manner, the crop is taken to local collecting points. From there, the cotton is taken to a ginnery. These are often owned by African cooperative societies. In the ginnery, the two parts of the bowl, the fibre, or lint as it's called, and the seeds are separated. In this cotton bowl, you can see these two parts. The seed in the centre is held very tightly by the fibre, and only machinery can effectively separate the two. The cotton bowls are fed into this machine, which will remove the seeds. A certain amount of seed is kept for planting next season. The surplus, which was once worthless and used as fuel for the ginnery furnace, is now a valuable commodity. Oil extracted from it is widely used as a substitute for olive oil. Cotton seed is also used in the manufacture of margarine and in the making of cattle feed and fertilizer. But it's the lint, the cotton after the removal of the seed, which is the raw material of the cotton industry.
This is Kampala, Uganda's largest town and the commercial center of the country. Here is the headquarters of the Lint Marketing Board, which controls the sale of cotton. Samples of cotton from ginneries all over the country are sent here to be examined. They're matched against existing standards for classification and grading before being sold. One factor affecting the classification is the length of the fibre. The most important cotton auctions in Uganda are held in Kampala and are attended by buyers from all over the world. Purchases are made on the evidence of the samples classified by the marketing board. After the sales, all forms of surface transport are brought into use as cotton from the many generies is conveyed to the ports. Road transport plays its part. Heavily laden trucks and trailers begin long cross-country hauls. There are many rivers and lakes in Uganda and the cargo services on these inland waterways provide a convenient means of transport for the cotton. Besides cotton and other cargoes, large numbers of passengers are carried on rafts pushed by the steamers. At the railheads, particularly those where water and rail meet, there is much activity. The railways have a most important role to play in this movement of cotton and many extra freight trains are put into service at this time of the year. A cotton research station has been established in Uganda to make sure that African cotton reaches the highest quality. Various strains are tested in the station laboratories. Records are kept of their weight, durability and the length of the fibres. Pests which attack the growing plant and the final crop are studied so that methods of pest destruction may be evolved. Experimental planting by hand and by machine is undertaken and exhaustive tests are made with many varieties of seed in the search for those strains best suited to East African conditions. The work of this station and the good husbandry of the farmer ensures that only the best of cotton is sent by the various means of transport to the ports of East Africa. From ports such as Mombasa, Uganda's cotton is carried to many parts of the world. In recent years, the annual export of cotton through these ports has exceeded 100,000 tonnes, and this has assisted in bringing about the rapid modernisation and expansion of port facilities in East Africa. The revenue from cotton, one of Uganda's two greatest exports, the other being coffee, is helping Uganda's development road building, housing projects, hospital and health services and educational schemes are all largely dependent upon the rest of the world's continued demand for cotton. Much of Uganda's cotton finds its way to the cotton towns of Lancashire in England. Here, where the pioneer work of men like Hargreaves, Arkwright and Crompton has resulted in some of the finest spinning and weaving machinery in the world, the combination of intricate machinery and clever fingers transforms the tangled fibres of raw cotton into fabrics of great variety and beauty.
technicians, designers and artists work together to produce cotton materials for every use and occasion. It's a far cry from the small plot of an African farmer to the floor of a fashion house in London. But all these varied fashion models spring from the humble cotton ball. Cotton for the summer, for the afternoon, for the evening, and even for a bridal gown. You and I, as well as all the people who grow and work with cotton, should be very thankful for this plant that has served mankind for so long.